Hey everybody and welcome back to Airflix. So today we're going to talk about saturation. So a lot of times your client is going to ask you to make the image pop. And by that they probably mean adding a lot more contrast and saturation to the image. And as a beginner colorist, you might just want to go straight to the saturation slider, push in a lot of saturation and then when you turn it on and off, you maybe tweak it a little bit and then you are like, okay, there's a lot of saturation. It looks poppy, it looks good. The thing is, that's not necessarily the best way to add saturation to an image. It increases the brightness and it tends to look a little bit video-like and frankly, it doesn't always look very good. So luckily there's other ways you can add saturation in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to show you those and I'm gonna finish up showing you how the pros add saturation to still get saturated image but you get a lot more density and you don't have the increased brightness but it still looks dare i say cinematic yeah i said it it does it does look more cinematic but anyway stay tuned let's jump on into davinci resolve and i'll show you okay so the first thing we're gonna do is just a general saturation adjustment so we go down to the saturation slider and we just pump it up a little bit and if you take a look at the vector scope, you'll see all the pixels are getting affected. And that's the issue with the saturation slider. It doesn't take into account the brightness of the image and the brightness or saturation value of the pixels. It'll just bump up everything. <coughs> and if I turn the note off and on, you can see it also affects the brightness of the image. Another thing you can do is go down to your color boost tool down here and increase the color boost. And what that does is it will increase the, it will saturate or desaturate the regions of low saturation. So it will affect the inner part of the vector scope here more than the outside part of the vector scope. So if you boost it up like so, it will grow more rapidly on the in, inside of the vector scope than on the outer edge of the vector scope. And again, like the saturation tool, if you take a look at the parade here, it will add a lot of brightness to the image. If we move to the next image here, we can try to separate or pinpoint a specific hue. So if you have your selection tool, Enable down here, if your, your qualifier here must be on, then you can, like so, then you can like separate out a, pick out a color, here we have the yellow. You'll get these other control points, and then you have the yellow itself, and we can bump that up a bit. And if you go a little bit far here, if you take a look at the vector scope over here, you can see it will only affect the yellow of the vector scope so we'll leave the rest alone so this is perfect for a more specific color correction and again this will bump up your your overall brightness and basically hue versus sat works exactly as the saturation slider so if you decrease your saturation slider let's say you bring that down to 42 something like that if you click and drag on the line, you'll affect all the colors, all the hues. And if you bring that up, you will counter the desaturation we just did there. So if I turn that note on and off, if you take a look at the scopes, absolutely nothing is happening. So increasing the saturation here, it's doing the exact same as the saturation slider. The only difference being, you can pick out different colors. And if you can, I would highly suggest you use the presets down here. That will give you a very smooth transition, very soft adjustment that's looking better on your image. Moving on to the color warper. Let's just bring that out for you so you can see it a little bit better. So if you have a 10, 12 bit image, I would suggest you go up to something like 12 you get a little bit more control without getting the banding and here you can and not, this is just another way of pointing out the colors so with the qualifier enabled you can pick on for example the couch here and we can 
adjust that if you pull that straight out this line if you follow this line straight out you will only adjust the saturation if you go left to right you will adjust the hues and if you go in obviously you will desaturate it so if we pull that out and you take a look at the vector scope over here at the same time you can see this is this is fairly sensitive to to color this is you have to be very very gentle with this and one way to get a little more precise adjustment with that is pin some of the more saturated areas so the outside will be pinned by default but you can pin a few more like so go back and select the rest of the red hues like so and then you can drag those out without affecting the most saturated red part and now if you look at the vector scope on the right you can see this is much more gentle adjustment making it easy for you to get exactly the color you want okay so the final method i'm going to show you is a pro technique to get more dense satura saturation and get away from this video like look you get from just increasing the saturation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change color spaces i'm going to go into a HSV and HSL color space. So let me just talk briefly about color properties. So the hue is the color itself. The red, the green, the blue or whatever you have in between. The saturation is the intensity of the color and the value if you're in the HSV color space determines how a certain hue will look with a custom brightness value. So the second note here, I'm going to change to HSV. Let me just rename that HSV. And you have three channels. So instead of RGB, you have HSV. And I'm going to turn off the hue. And I'm going to turn off the value. So now you only have the satura saturation channel active. And the same on the note previous, I'm going to change that into HSL. I'm going to rename that note. Right click and turn off the hue. Turn off the luminance channel. So now if you take a look at the channels, again, we only have the saturation channel active. And now, so now you correct this, you go into your... Uh, gain wheel and you pump some saturation in with the gain wheel and you can see on the scope as I, as I turn the you can see on the vector scope and if you look at the brightness here on the parade as I turn the node on and off we're adding saturation but we're not really affecting the brightness overall of the image we are affecting it a little bit but we're going to counter that by going to the HSL node go back to the to the gain wheel, turn that down a little bit. And now if I turn these two notes on and off, and if you take a look at the brightness levels here, almost no change. But we are getting a good healthy amount of satura saturation in the image. So let's compare that to a saturation adjustment. So I'm gonna add a new note here, I'm gonna call that saturation and I'm gonna disable these two now notes for now and I'm just in saturation I'm going to go down to the slider and bump that up a bit like so I'm gonna grab a still of that then I'm gonna disable that note and enable the other two notes stop and there and now if we play these notes so, on the left hand side here, you can see, I hope you can see it on YouTube. On the left hand side here, you have the HSL, HSV correction, and the right hand side, the saturation adjustment. And you can see, you still have a lot of saturation. It's just much more dense now, and especially if we go over her lips and her cheeks here, you can see it's much more pleasing. It looks much nicer. It's, it's just it just has that density to it and 
dare I say it looks more cinematic? Yeah, I do. I, and I really think it's something you should try to experiment with on your own footage. This is really a cool way to add saturation to image. This is not a method I have invented. I got it from uh, Anton Milesevich. Uh, he did this, he showed this um, a few, few years back and uh, I've been using it ever since. And I really, really enjoy the, the correcting saturation like this. And I hope you do too. And if you like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Please give us a thumbs up. It'll really, really help us get out there to more people and enable us to make more videos. So leave a comment if you have any comments to this below and uh, yeah, have a great day.